So in this next module, we're going to do some practical examples, which I hope will really reinforce some of these concepts we've been talking about last week and this week. So I'm going to kind of go through a couple of sentences, one or two sentences at a time, and point out some of these problems that we've been talking about with verbs, with clutter, and then show you how I would fix them. And I'll kind of take you through my thought process on editing. I think it's really good practice just to watch this video from start to finish if you want to do it that way. That'll be the most efficient. Um, it will help to reinforce the concepts. Of course, if you have more time, uh, an even better way to reinforce the concepts would be to test yourself a little bit. So every time I put up an example on the screen, you could pause the video and try to edit it on your own. Try to find some of these problems on your own. See what you can come up with and then come back to the video and kind of compare it to, to what I have. That's another good way to kind of reinforce and test yourself on what we've been learning. So here's the first example. This is a two sentences example, and I actually really love this example because it has a good story behind it. Um, when I first started uh, teaching at Stanford, uh, some of the students were taking a course on statistics in another department, and uh, the, the, the textbook for that uh, course was about three inches high. I, I'm only exaggerating slightly. The students really, really struggled with that course and um, were not having a good time, and I think largely attributable to the, to the textbook. And so anyway, I ended up teaching an alternate course uh, in statistics for them, which was the generation of, of my teaching in statistics at Stanford. So um, you can kind of see I pulled a couple of sentences from the introduction of that textbook. So this is not even the technical material. But you can kind of guess or see why uh, that textbook ended up so long and a little bit hard to read. So this uh, example has a lot of the principles with verbs that we've been talking about this week. So let's kind of go through it. It says, the fear expressed by some teachers that students would not learn statistics well if they were permitted to use canned computer programs has not been realized in our experience. A careful monitoring of achievement levels before and after the introduction of computers in the teaching of our course revealed no appreciable change in students' performances. So again, this has a lot of um, issues with verbs that we've been talking about this week. So if you go to that first sentence, the first thing I want to point out is I want you to think about what's the subject of that sentence? And what's the verb? What's the main verb? So the subject of that sentence is the fear. The main verb of that sentence is the realized, has not been realized. So notice that this is one of those instances where we get a really long subject before we get to the verb. So the subject is this, is this fear, but we get all this description about the fear, the fear expressed by some teachers that students would not learn, blah, 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 blah. And then finally we get to the verb at has not been realized. Now notice this is a really long subject. We've got a lot of distance between the subject and the verb. Also, this is an instance where we've got a noun, fear, that could have been a really exciting verb to fear, right? And so um, this is an instance where perhaps writing with verbs rather than nouns would help. So then we get along to the verb. The other thing about the verb is it's uh, in the passive tense. Uh, it's a boring verb, realize. It's not all very exciting. So a lot of issues with verbs here. Um, and then there's a few other things to point out in this uh, example. So notice the use of negatives. We talked about this last week, that you want to try to turn your negative constructions into positive constructions. So you can see how awkward it is, especially when I read this out loud, when you have a lot of nots. They would not learn statistics, has not been realized. So that's very awkward for the reader. So see if you can turn those into positives. Again, you almost always can turn those negatives into positive constructions. We have a little bit of wordiness, certainly, in the sentence. So like, in our experience, it's a little bit wordy. Now we move to the second sentence. So it says, a careful monitoring of achievement levels before and after the introduction of computers and the teaching of our course. Notice we get the same exact problem, but we get that very, very long subject in there. Uh, and then we finally get to the main verb at revealed. So again, we take a really long time to get from the subject, the monitoring, to the main verb, revealed. So that's one problem. We have the same issue about turning verbs into nouns. So notice that the subject, monitoring, is actually a noun that could have been a really good verb, monitor. Uh, instead, they use the noun form. And then we get to the verb, and it's a pretty boring verb, revealed. So monitor would be a better verb choice here than revealed, if you could turn the sentence and use the verb monitor. So we have kind of the same major issues with verbs as in the first um, sentence. And then we also have one other thing to point out about this second sentence, a little bit wordy, and we also have this little hedge word in there. And so they say, it revealed no appreciable change in students' performances. You gotta be a little careful with hedge words. 
Um, scientists love to put hedge words in their work because they feel like they're kind of, you know, hedging their bets. Um, the problem with hedge words is that they often raise a lot of questions. So when I'm reading that sentence, especially because this book was written by a statistician, you know, and of course there's the old adage about lying with statistics. You know, I read that sentence and I come to the word appreciable, no appreciable change, and it opens up all this question for me about, oh, well, was there some change then? And it just wasn't statistically significant. You know, it, it opens up all these questions. So be very careful about the use of hedge words. Uh, if you don't need them, I would drop them rather than kind of opening Pandora's box. So I went ahead and edited this sentence to take care of some of these issues and came up with, Many teachers feared that the use of canned computer programs would prevent students from learning statistics. Notice I turned that the fear into the verb feared. And then we monitored, again I took, turned the monitoring into the verb monitored. We monitored student achievement levels before and after the introduction of computers in our course and found no detriments in performance. So notice how much easier those two sentences are to read and we've also dropped a lot of the clutter. They move along much more nicely. So here's another example, it's a little bit shorter. It says, review of each center's progress in recruitment is important to ensure that the cost involved in maintaining each center's participation is worthwhile. So there's another couple of things we can point out in this sentence. So the first thing is that, again, we have somewhat of a long, verb, a long subject here. It's not the longest subject ever, but it's a little bit long before we get to the verb again. So kind of watch that. We also have the issue again of the noun versus the verb. So review is a noun where we could have used the verb to review. Instead of using the nice spunky verb review, they used a really boring verb, is. They used is twice, so is important, is worthwhile. So again, try to watch yourself in the use of the verb to be. It's a very weak verb. It really doesn't move the sentence along well. Then we get a couple of other things I want to point out here. We get these kind of vague descriptors. Important, worthwhile. These are kind of vague words and I'm going to I'm going to kind of uh, use the I'm going to show you a couple of examples that have the word important in them today and kind of discourage you from using that if, uh, in most cases you'll notice like each center's participation is worthwhile well what do you mean by worthwhile that's really really vague right what specifically are would make that participation worthwhile so you can see that's kind of vague we get some clunky writing in here, like involved in maintaining. That's a little bit clunky, right? So we can turn this, uh, we can edit this sentence by, again, taking that review and turn it into a, a verb, we uh, review. And actually what I did with this one was we've got this review is important. So instead of saying, you know, the review is important to do, I said we should, we should review each center's recruitment progress to make sure its continued participation is cost effective. So rather than saying, you know, important and worthwhile, which are very vague, I'm being more specific by saying that it's cost effective. Also by using that descriptor cost effective, I can get rid of all of that things, uh, you know, all the uh, involved in maintaining, the cost involved in maintaining, I can get rid of all of those extra words. So you could probably even get a few more words out of this sentence if you really tried it. It could probably be streamlined even a little bit more. But I think that's a, a big improvement on the first version. All right, so another example. It should be emphasized that these proportions generally are not the result of significant increases in moderate and severe injuries, but in many instances reflect mildly injured persons not being seen at a hospital. So as I read that out loud, you probably started to hear some of these things that we have been talking about. So the first one is that kind of clearing of the throat. It should be emphasized that. Right, again, uh, you know, the fact that you are writing about something in your paper means you're putting emphasis on it. You don't need to, you know, add this little clearing in the throat at the beginning. So that it should be emphasized can probably be cut completely. It's just kind of dead weight. Then we move along and we say, we see this, these proportions. Now, obviously the authors here are referring back to something they've been talking about in the previous sentence. But there may be a slightly more specific and more informative adjective we can use there rather than these. So for example, I'm going to use uh, shifting proportions because that kind of reflects back what was in the earlier sentence about the fact that we have some kind of shift in the proportion of moderate and severe injuries versus mild injuries. Then we keep going along here and we get to an adverb generally. Again, adverbs are generally dead weight. So uh, you want to go ahead and nix them, read the sentence without it, usually you, and almost always you'll see that you actually don't need it. If you get rid of it, you'll see it's really unnecessary. 
Uh, you probably heard as I was reading this out loud uh, some wordiness. So we got the result of, which could be shorter. You could write due to. In many instances, that could just be often. So we're getting some longer phrases that we could make shorter. You probably also heard uh, those nots. Hopefully you're starting to recognize the use of the negative. So you probably heard me kind of st stumbling over those a little bit when I'm reading. They are not the result of significant re increases. Uh, reflect mildly injured persons not being seen in a hospital. You can see that that's really very awkward. So can you somehow turn those into positives? And then we get this kind of awkward use of the verb to be. Um, and you might have to sit there and kind of, this is sort of a long sentence, you might have to kind of sit there and wrestle with, you don't have the context from which this sentence came from, you might have to sit there and wrestle with what is it exactly that the authors were trying to say. So I kind of stepped back from this one and said, well, what is it exactly that they were trying to say? Well, they're trying to say something like that there's been a shift in proportions of injuries, that is that there seems to be more moderate and severe injuries, at least the data seem to show that, compared with mild injuries. But what they're telling you is that that shift in proportions doesn't have to, doesn't reflect a real increase in moderate and severe injuries, but it is something to do with how many people actually show up at the hospital. The mildly injured persons maybe aren't, you know, insured, and so they're not coming to the hospital anymore. So that's the gist of that sentence. So always a good idea when you're editing things to make sure that you kind of understand the author's meaning. You can use that to help you edit the sentence. So I rewrote this one to shifting proportions in injury severity. And now I, ha I was a little more specific here. I said may reflect stricter hospital admission criteria. I gave a little bit more of a specific reason about why they weren't coming to the hospital or why they weren't showing up in the hospital data rather than true increases in moderate and severe injuries. So I reworked that one a little bit to get rid of some of the problems, rewrote it a little bit to uh, reflect the main meaning, and added a little bit more information, but with less words. All right, another example. So this one reads, important studies to examine the descriptive epidemiology of autism, including the prevalence and changes in the characteristics of the population over time have begun. Now again, as I'm reading that out loud, you can hear some of the parts of that sentence that are a little bit awkward. So probably, hopefully, the first thing that you noticed, I'm going to just kind of list the problems for this one, is that, again, the problem of where's the verb. So the main verb of that sentence doesn't come until the very end. So that's really hard for the reader to, to read through because they don't know, you know what, where you're going with this. So the verb's way at the end, have begun. The subject is studies. The studies have begun. So there's too much distance between the subject and the main verb there. That one's pretty easy to remedy. Again, I'm going to pick on the word important. So you want to watch these kind of vague fluff words like important. Because what are you implying? So are you saying like, you know, well, these studies were important, but these other studies weren't important. And, and what makes them important? And who's judging that they're important? And what do you mean by important? Right? It's this kind of vague descriptor that really doesn't add much. You saying it's important really doesn't make it important. Um, and it kind of implies that there's some other studies out there that aren't important, right? So, um, so I just like to get rid of that descriptor altogether. It's kind of a fluff word. Uh, a really cute little thing you might have noticed uh, in reading this. Uh, you might have picked this up. So they say, including the prevalence and changes in the characteristics of the population over time. So they're talking about changes over time. Now. If you think carefully about that, can you have a change that isn't over time? You can't, right? By definition, changes have to happen over time. So uh, that over time is redundant. It's like what we talked about last week with successful solutions. A change is always over time, so we don't need to put the over time. That's just extraneous words there. And then at the end of the sentence, we get this, you know, in the characteristics of the population. Well, that's a very vague, what do you, you know, of what population? Unless you're going to specify a particular population, then of the population is just too vague in general to add anything. It's just extra words then. You might as well cut it. So I took this sentences, uh, sentence and rewrote it, keeping all of these points in mind. To studies have begun, notice I moved the verb up, studies have begun to describe, notice that instead of examine the descriptive, I put to, to, to describe, to describe the epidemiology of autism, including recent changes in the disorder's prevalence and characteristics. All right, here's another example that we're going to look at. I'm going to get out the red pen for this example. So it reads, there are multiple other mechanisms that are important. 
but most of them are suspected to only have a small impact or are only important because of impact on one of the three primary mechanisms. So again, when you're editing things, you're going to have to kind of sit back from it. You don't have the context uh, in this case, but you say, well, okay, what was the author trying to say here? So I think the gist of it is that probably in the previous sentence, the author had talked about these three primary mechanisms. The next sentence, the author wants to qualify that there are multiple other mechanisms that might be at work, um, but uh, probably this author isn't going to spend much time on them because they only have a small effect or they work through, they impact one of these other mechanisms. So, so that's kind of the gist of the sentence. So let's kind of go through and see what things we can cut. So first of all, notice we get there are multiple other mechanisms that are important. So as I told you about last week, be on the lookout for there are and there is. A lot of times those can be cut completely. They're completely unnecessary. So this is one of those instances. So we can cut there are and just start the sentence at multiple other mechanisms. We have to get rid of this that then. But notice how we don't lose anything. So instead of saying there are multiple other mechanisms that are important, just say multiple other mechanisms are important. See how much better that is? You get rid of three words. And then we get to but uh, then we get to this are important. So I'm going to pick on important again. Um, specifically in this case, I'm going to pick on this important and get rid of it because, again, important is kind of, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a fluff or it's a little bit vague. Uh, in, in this case, it's almost a little bit contradictory when you read the sentence, right? So they say multiple other mechanisms are important, but, you know, some of them only have a small impact. So that's kind of contradictory. If it only has a small impact, is it really important? So I really don't like the important here because it doesn't dovetail well with the small effect size, the small impact. So I'm going to get rid of that uh, completely. And rather than saying, and again, and then also we have this, you know, to be verb are, which is really boring. So let's get rid of that. Rather than saying um, they, they are important, we could say something like multiple other mechanisms exist or multiple other mechanisms are at work or multiple other mechanisms play a role. I, I'm going to go here with play a role. Any of those would really work just fine. So multiple other mechanisms play a role. Um, and then we get to, but most of them are suspected to only have a small impact. Most of them are suspected to. Well, OK, this is one of those uh, instances where we have a lot of words that we don't really need here. So what's the purpose of putting the most of them are suspected to in here? Well, the author kind of wants to qualify that these aren't definitely known. Right? We don't, we're not quite sure. Uh, we think they have a small impact. So uh, there's a lot of shorter ways to put in that little hedge. You could use the word may. You could use the word likely. So we probably don't need any of this, you know, but most of them are suspected to. Um, and then we get they either have a small impact, so therefore, you know, they're not one of the three primary mechanisms, or their impact is working through one of the three primary mechanisms. Notice the repetition uh, we get are only important because of impact. Notice the use of impact twice, the use of important twice. So uh, what I'm going to do here is actually just say, I'm going to be really direct and say multiple other mechanisms play a, and instead of saying the small impact, I'm going to say play um, only a small role. So how about that, right? So there I'm capturing the idea that some of them only have a small impact. So multiple other mechanisms play only a small role or, and then we can go right into they either play a small role or they're working through one of the three primary mechanisms. So or, I'm just going to say or work by impacting, I don't think we need this on, impacting one of the three primary mechanisms. So let's put that all together. Notice how much we were able to drop here. Multiple other mechanisms play only a small role or work by impacting one of the three primary mechanisms. We got rid of a lot of stuff. And I actually got rid of the hedge, the most of them are suspected to that hedge. I didn't even put a likely or a may in there because we gave so many options. They either are, play a small role or they work through one of these other mechanisms. I think we've sort of covered all our bases, so we probably don't need a hedge word in there. All right, so the next uh, example reads, after rejecting paths with poor signal to noise ratios, 
we were left with 678 velocity measurements of waves with 7.5 seconds period and 891 measurements of 15 second waves. So this one has kind of a lot of extra words that you can hear as you're kind of reading it along. So there's a few things we can get rid of here. So one thing is, you know, this we've got a after rejecting paths we were left with. Well, this might be one of those instances where we want to just get rid of the we altogether and just say what happened. I mean, it's a judgment call here, but it makes for a somewhat long subject, but I don't think it's bad if we just said rejecting paths with poor signal to noise ratio left, right? You could just kind of be really direct. The fact that you rejected them left a certain number of measurements. Left um, 678 velocity measurements of, and then we've got a lot of waves in here. We probably don't need two waves. Left 678 velocity measurements of 7 point second, 7.5 second waves and 891 of 15 second waves. So notice there's a lot of little words we can drop. We don't need to repeat measurements. Um, we don't probably don't need that word period in there. So there's a lot of little things we can drop from this one. So this one goes to rejecting paths with poor signal to noise ratios. Left 678 velocity measurements of 7.5 second waves and 891 of 15 second waves. All right, so another uh, example here. It is suspected that the importance of temperature has more to do with impacting rates of other reactions than being a mechanism of disinfection itself, since ponds are rarely hot enough for temperature alone to cause disinfection. So again, this one's a little bit out of context, and you kind of have to step back from it a minute and think, okay, there's some context here. Probably in the prior sentence, the authors were telling us something about the importance of temperature in disinfecting ponds. So we probably already have in the prior sentence, you know, in temperature is important in disinfecting ponds. In this sentence, they're telling us that it's not that uh, you know the high temperatures cause the water to boil and that kills the microorganisms. It's not that the heat directly kills the microorganisms. Rather, the disinfection is happening because the hotter temperatures will speed up the reactions of other um, reactions that cause disinfection. So this one's a little bit complicated, and I'm actually going to reorganize this sentence a little bit. So do more than a little bit of, you know, just kind of crossing out words. I'm actually going to try to, de to uh, reorganize it a little bit. Um, there's a lot of things that we can cut out, as with before. So we get this, uh, it is suspected that. Again, that's kind of a little bit of a hedge. Instead of, you know, giving all of those words, if, if it's uncertain, you could just say may or likely or might, something like that. So we're probably going to get rid of that. Um, the previous sentence probably told us that temperature was important on disinfecting ponds, so we probably don't need to repeat that importance of temperature. We can probably rely on the fact that that information was given in the previous uh, sentence. So I'm probably going to delete a lot of that. And then I'm actually going to reorder this sentence just slightly. Logically, I actually like, I really like this last part, I think was nice and direct. It says, I'm going to start here. It says, ponds are rarely hot enough for temperature alone to cause disinfection. So again, imagine that they've just told us temperature, high temperatures cause disinfection. Now they're saying, well, it's not due to the heat. It's not due to, you know, the pond boiling or something, but it's due to this other thing. So I actually like starting there and then giving, that's, you know, the, the expected reason. That's what you might expect, but that's not the case. So, then, so we'll start by, you know, um, saying that it's, it's not what you might expect. And, and here's what it actually is. And I'm actually going to just take that piece as in, and then I'm going to add to that a thus and kind of finish off the thought. They're, they're not hot enough for the temperature alone to cause disinfection, disinfection. Thus, what's probably happening is the heat is impacting um, these other reactions. And I actually said something slightly different here. Um, I said thus the effect of temperature. That's just referring to what we've already been told about in the previous sentence, that, that temperature has some kind of important effect. Uh, I said is likely mediated. I like this word mediated. It gets at this idea that, you know, the way uh, the disinfection is happening is through this kind of indirect mechanism. So it's likely mediated uh, through, and then I'm going to go back up to here, so through its impact on the rates 
of other reactions and then getting rid of this. Notice that being a mechanism of dis disinfection itself, that's a repeat. We already said it's not a mechanism of disinfection itself when we said that ponds are really hot enough to cause disinfection. So that was repetitive, so we can end right there. So this one can be edited to something like, ponds are rarely hot enough for temperature alone to cause disinfection, thus the effect of temperature is likely mediated through its impact on the rates of other reactions. All right, so one more practice example here. So uh, again, this one I'm going to rearrange the order of this a little bit even. So not just quite uh, editing word by word, but also kind of thinking about the order and rearranging the order a little bit to make it even uh, better. So this one says, it was assumed that due to reduced work at the joints of the lower limbs and less energy loss in the prosthetic leg, running with the dedicated prostheses allows for maximum sprinting at lower metabolic costs than in the healthy ankle joint complex. So you can see that's kind of wordy. This was actually the last sentence of an abstract. And so it was actually, the authors were trying to tell you what their conclusion was. It's a little hard to get that because they're being really indirect here by saying it was assumed that. Uh, we'd rather have something like we concluded that, right? It's a, that it was assumed that's a little bit confusing and ambiguous. So there's a lot of things we can cut here. You can see that there's some repetition. Um, it was assumed that, obviously we want to get rid of that. We get this due to reduced work at the joints of the lower legs, limbs. What the, what the others are trying to say here, I think, is that the prosthetic leg has a, an effect that they discovered in their paper. It seems to reduce the work of the uh, lower leg joint, uh, and it seems to uh, reduce the energy loss um, in the lower leg joint compared with a healthy ankle. So um, they're kind of just saying, well, this is what we found, and, and due to that finding, we think this. So I'm going to be a little bit more direct here, and rather than saying, you know, due to that finding, I'm going to repeat what they actually found, and then out of that comes their conclusion. So I'm going to say something like, and again, I'm changing this one around quite a bit. So the prosthetic leg, so start with what the prosthetic leg does. What is that effect? The prosthetic leg does two things. It reduces work and energy loss. So it, again, see I'm writing with verbs. It reduces work and energy loss. And then we're, what compared with what? We need a compared with. So this is where we're going to get compared with, and then we would come put the healthy ankle joint. Compared with a healthy ankle joint. Um, I'm going to get rid of complex. We probably don't need healthy ankle joint complex, just a healthy ankle joint. So the prosthetic leg reduces work and energy loss compared with a healthy ankle joint. And then because that's what we found, so out of that we're making some conclusion. That's what they're calling their assumption. We're, we're making a conclusion. We're guessing that if that's true, that may lead to something. And what it might lead to is which may lead to, out of that it may be the case that the, there are lower uh, metabolic costs during maximal sprinting. So that may lead to these lower metabolic costs um, while maximum sprinting. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you the, the rewrite here rather than scribbling it all on the screen here. So the prosthetic leg reduces work and energy loss compared to the healthy ankle joint and that in turn may lead to lower metabolic costs, or that's the author's assumption, with it, what they think, may lead to lower metabolic costs during maximum sprinting. So notice I was able to get rid of the the repeat of the word prosthesis there. Uh, I was able to get rid of a lot of extra words as well. And hopefully capturing the essence of what they were trying to say in a very concise uh, and direct way. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.